Hi and welcome back to Flint Hills. I'm Jeff. I really appreciate the time and effort people put into their layouts and also the time it takes to film on their layouts. Now some think that has made me really laugh this week has been Charlie Bishop at Chadwick Motor Railway. You have to watch his ultimate track cleaning video and I will certainly now stop putting my track in the dishwasher. In this video I'm going to explain um, what I've been up to recently, uh, my new addition to my layout and uh, some other departmental trains, how I did the back scenes and I want to really talk about my plans for the future and uh, get your input to this as well. So, the latest model I purchased to run on Flint Hills is the HST-P, or prototype from Daypole. The power cars are available in two variants, be it the passenger livery or the departmental livery. And as I like uh, departmental trains, that was the option I went for, as you can actually see here with my collection uh, on show. Daypole have made two salon packs available that each contains four coaches. We have two first class coaches and there is two second class coaches. Um, I've only purchased one of these packs as they are actually quite expensive. And Daypole have also made a buffet pack uh, which contains the buffet car and the kitchen car. Uh, which I've also purchased, so I can make quite a nice rake. My thoughts are overall, it's a very, very nice model, but it's certainly not cheap. Looking at the power cars, um, there is actually only one motorised unit, the other one is a dummy unit. They come ready to run for DC, and each would require a next 18 decoder for DCC working. Um, they have operational lights, uh, certainly have the flush glazing, and it's certainly very highly detailed on the chassis and certainly on the bogies. A slight issue is that once you have lifted the cab body off there is not much room to um, actually fit the decoder because the lighting wires in each corner are quite tight in fact I had to uh, unplug the lighting wires from each end to fully remove the cab so I could actually get the decoder in I guess you could probably just get them away to get them in but it is a little bit tight so um, just a minor thing really and it's probably uh, it's just me being old and grumpy. Given the cost of the uh, power units uh, I do wonder why they didn't put power into the dummy car um, as Revolution Trains did for their Pendolino. Um, again it's just my view but it works fine and uh, yeah it's a lovely looking model. Looking at the coaches, again no real issue with the finish, uh, clearly new tooling, they have recessed door handles and uh, they don't have the window bezels. It's the loco hall type roof and um, they do come with the buffers on the end. Now these do come with the Daypole uh, light bar ready fittings and I'll, I'll talk about that um, in a minute. My issue here is again, um, not so much with the HSTP, but in general with Daypole, is that the couplings just keep on coming undone whilst the train's going round. Um, and you know, what's more embarrassing is that, you know, I've had to remove the wheel sets because some of these are just locked and won't release at all. And that's straight out of the box. 
So you end up having to sort of like take the whole of the bottom of the coach off to take the wheels out, get there to get to the actual mechanism so you can actually release the coupling correctly. Again, it's a small detail, but uh, yeah, it is a shame. As I mentioned earlier, um, it, the coach comes with the day pole uh, lighting connection. Um, but again, given the price of this, I'd have expected this unit to come with the actual day pole lights already installed. But perhaps that's another problem, is where can you purchase the day pole light bars from? I all said, I'm really, really happy with the HSPT. I think it's a lovely looking train. And um, yep, this is going to sit very nice with all the other departmentals which I've been slowly collecting. And as you can see there, I do have the network rail, the network management train. Um, I've put together a structural gauging train, but I'm just waiting for the DBSO to come out for that one. Uh, yes, I have some breakdown units over there. And uh, I've got the, the small class train there. So yeah, there's a few more for me to collect. I'm waiting to get the uh, the, the Revolution trains uh, Sturgeon to come on as well. But um, this is my sort of like sea of yellow for today. And uh, yep, we'll get some of these running right now. The back scene at Flint Hills is from ID Back Scenes and uh, I must say I'm very pleased with this and it fits nicely into the layout uh, with the hill. However, this was not my first attempt. The initial back scene for this end of the where the station is was going to be this car park scene which I thought felt fit really nicely with what I wanted. Um, however, it didn't work out and you might see there's lots of creases in it and uh, it didn't go very well at all. So I was a bit disappointed and in the end the second part of the, the actual scene was actually the same scene but just reversed. So it looked a little bit not good, so uh, hence why the changes were made. This second attempt to the back scene 
um, was actually slightly different. In fact, the back seam came already with the sticky on the back and you just had to peel off the backing paper and stick it onto whatever you were going to do. Um, which actually was easier than the other one, which I had to use a spray glue for and uh, it did slightly bubble afterwards, which was again very disappointing. The actual back seam is simply stuck to some plastic soffit board, which is very, very lightweight and very handy for me because I had to make a bit of a kink around there for the uh, for where the hill goes. And with a couple of splits, the plastic's easy to manage and very flexible, which I liked. And the other good thing was that we can actually put the plastic trim down that it just simply slots into. So again, it's easy for lifting out the section and putting the section back in, uh, which I'll now demonstrate. If I lift this section out, and it comes out as simple as that, and obviously I can put it back in. I can't do it one-handed, unfortunately, but there we go. But there you get the idea. Smoothly, uh, I just cut out a little slot so I could screw the edging to my board and as you can see there and it gave me that nice little groove that the back seam now sits in and that makes that nice and easy just to screw that back seam in and keep that nice and tight so that's how i did my back seams here at uh, flint hills much easier to remove and so have to move the layout and I can just slot them straight back in and I sound really pleased that once I get some proper trees in this corner here and start to build up the uh, the scenics and start putting the static grass all in I think that will merge in quite well again bushes along the back there to hide that white strip uh, that um, should look quite good and whilst we're talking about back scenes um, I've actually got the side screen which is just again a bit of the old soffit board uh, which I painted black and screwed to the side and uh, simply cut away and I've taken a piece off here so you can actually see the original board you can see the polystyrene which all goes all the way along and that gets completely hidden when I screw the black plastic on um, as you'll see just there and that really tidies up that uh, that edge and on the side here if I really need to again it sits there but it's easy just to take off so I can actually get to anything that derails underneath and uh, to help run any wires so again that's what I've done with the side screen I would appreciate if you would subscribe to my channel as I've noticed only 25% of my viewers actually do. Also, please check on the little bell icon and you will also then receive a notification when the next video is released. So, what have I been up to since my last video? Well, with my DCC layout here, I can run trains manually with a tablet, with a phone, or even with my wireless remote, and all at the same need be. However, I've also invested in full automation software, um, which I fully understand is not for everyone. I've set up my layout automation with some software called iTrain, and I think it's great, and I've been really, really pleased with it. Having got to grips with the basic setup which you have seen me using in past videos, I've now been tweaking the data and refining things to smooth some of the features and running out. Um, obviously some of the functionality I didn't use in the beginning because I didn't need to or perhaps because I didn't fully understand it at the time. So this is where I would like perhaps your, your help here. So any comments, welcome. 
uh, my thinking was that uh, from the traffic coming out of here I was going to put a car park this way and uh, we got some station shops and I got the stairs going up into the main platform station area so I was going to put a fence line across here static grass down the front and uh, and on this area here, this is where I'm not sure. Obviously the road's gonna to have to continue up the slope. Um, I was gonna perhaps put some, some properties here. I didn't know if to do um, an old scrap yard here or actually just do some like, vegetation or, uh, don't know, let me know what you're thinking on this area. Obviously I've got a ball joint there, so obviously I wanna try and keep them separate if I can, to make it easier for the board. Moving up to the TMD, I was thinking of putting a gate across here, and uh, I was gonna put some, perhaps some oil in this area here, some oil tanks. Again, a little car park. Um, I was gonna put things down the middle here for uh, refueling, that sort of thing. And obviously I can get some bits and bobs to go in there. I've, I've got the, uh, the wash plant which I've just moved out of the way that can sit here normally and uh, obviously I'm going to put some yard lighting in as well but uh, again just if you've got any ideas and any thoughts I'd appreciate them and uh, yeah so really that's down to me now to get cracking again with continuing the the trunk in all the way along now I've started to put the the bits in I've uh, got no excuses now, I've got all the extra um, signals to make up, to put in. Um, yep, and then I can crack on with the ballasting. So I've got loads and loads to do, and uh, just need to get on and do it and find the time now. This rock formation here, um, this was originally underneath here is polystyrene, and it just built up, and then this is sculpt to mould. Uh, that's been put on and as it dries I've just gone at it with a, a knife quite a deep knife to get the the actual cuts into the rocks and then I've let it dry and then I've gone over with a, a very dark black wash to get the black into the actual cuts and then just gone over with a grey and then effectively uh, I've used like a dry white on the brush just to put the highlighters on the edges to uh, enhance those. So that's how I did that little rock formation. And again, very similar with the formation at the back actually whilst I'm here, um, but that's just been painted brown. And uh, obviously once the grasses and uh, static grass and all the trees go in that, you know, that will all disappear virtually, but it just gives it a bit of a background to get rid of that awful white. Okay, so please let me know your thoughts on this area as well. Thank you. So I'm going to draw this video to a close and I look forward to receiving your comments below. Please like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time. Um, I'm going to leave you now with some running shots and there's a few bloopers at the end uh, which might make you smile. Take care and stay safe.
this train, um, that it would have come fitted with the day pole uh, lighting bar already inside that coach. More embarrassing is when you take them out of the pack, they're actually not even moving, they're frozen solid. 